We hope you enjoy some of the following clips from a presentation given by Dwayne Plapp at the Financial Group of Mass Mutual in Cincinnati, Ohio. Hope you'll say cha-ching, as most certainly you'll hear Dwayne say. And we're going to talk about what you enjoy doing the most. Spend two to three minutes again to each person. <laughs> Sir. Well, I just found out that Darren is associated with the opera, and I'm on the board of the Flippin' Opera in Cincinnati, and he was like a seamstress for one of the opera people, and I thought that was just cool. Who else wants to share? Uh, John likes uh, flying and spending time with his family. Uh, outdoors, he likes fishing and hiking, and enjoys a uh, nice dinner and a movie, and the last thing is sitting next to me. <laughs> okay, what did he have? Uh, he enjoys the same kind of stuff. He likes to go uh, hiking, uh, usually uh, mountain hiking. Uh, he likes to do something that's kind of uh, uh, finding some free apps on his phone or something to turn into it. He also likes American history, and he, and he really likes something else we have in common. We like to listen to baseball game on the radio more than we like watching them. You find out some neat things about people when you share. And that's why when you sit down and create relationships with people that you meet at networking events, it's amazing what you find out. Okay? Again, birds of a feather flock together. And all of a sudden now you think you've got a referral partner, you got something in common, and you think you're talking about it. And the whole thing is understanding these things. You've got to know thyself before you know others. So why do people buy? Some say it's avoid pain. Some say it's a safe decision. Some say you're doing or making the right decision. Okay, maybe you're creating more pleasure. These are all things that you should know. I took it off the internet. Why people buy things? Usually it's a basic need. This is again Maslow's theory, basic needs. So if you get a person with basic needs, they're not going to be interested in the ego part. Okay, maybe the person's convenience. Maybe it's peace of mind. Maybe the person you're talking to is buying because of what he has is peace of mind. Let me ask a question. Why do people buy, who buys insurance? Not why. Who buys insurance? Who, who buys life insurance? People that love other people and people that always care of other people. Okay, that's close. People have seen the value in it. Ever seen anybody who's getting divorced by life insurance? Not very often. People who love their families. So what are most people doing when they buy life insurance? So who love their family. Exactly. They're creating a legacy. Why do people have a legacy? Why, why would you create a legacy? Most people want their family to like them after they die. And that's what most legacies are about. Most legacies are actually about the people that you care about most. Thanks to God. People buy life insurance because most people love their families or they want to create a legacy of some type. Okay? If you write down who your ideal client is, now all of a sudden, we, go, we actually go after and start targeting those people. Like my business, I'm a basketball team. So what our whole goal, we, we only work, we had commercials on ESPN on Saturday morning and Sunday morning with all the fishing shows going on. I sponsored uh, uh, Hart on a fishing show on Monday night. I had two ulterior motors. Not only was I interested in getting his clientele, but he also owned the Hart Sports Show. So guess who got the biggest booth? Hello? Whenever I wanted a bigger, little bigger space, they just called Chip. Hey, Chip, a little bigger space. Oh, yeah, you're my sponsor on my show. Yeah, we're the only sponsor. Good. You get everything you want. What's the definition for a small business? Art? A couple million sales. A few else got another answer. What's a small business? Family owned. Two to 100 employees. Two to 100 employees. <laughs> you know what the Cincinnati Chamber of Commerce's definition of small business is? Company under 500 employees. You know the Northern Kentucky definition of a small business is? A company under 300 employees. You know the definition of the Sharonville Chamber is of a small business? Under 100 employees. So, what's a small business? Depends, you gotta define that. Who are you looking for? A company with 10 to 20 employees? From one to two employees? One to five employees? One to 25 employees? Who are you looking for? Are you looking for consumers? Are you looking for companies? <coughs> are you looking for, who are you looking for? Okay. So you got to find your client. So can location, age, employees, occupation, attitude, interests, and networks are all part of that. Okay? Characters of your target market? Consumer. Income, personality, location, style, attitude, passion. Maybe it's somebody who has the same passion as you do. Maybe it's somebody who likes, who likes the opera. So maybe you want everybody's in the opera. 
I have one client who's a financial planner who work, who's uh, who's involved in, in crossroads with a kids ministry. His cl ideal client is somebody who uh, is who's working in that industry, who has small kids at crossroads. That's all he goes after. I have another client. His his, his uh, clientele are pilots, because he's an ex-com air pilot. So all he goes after, or, and all he target market is pilots. Maybe it's a business, so maybe you define the industry, define the company, define the location, define the size, define its products. Okay? So here's what you do. I want you to write down on, a seat, on, the, on, the, on the slide, what are the characteristics of your target market? Who are you looking for? Cool was this? When you mentioned Dwayne Platt, you thought of insurance, and you thought of insurance, you thought of Dwayne Platt. And I was doing it in Northern Kentucky. Only. Just like right now. I have no clients across the river in Northern Kentucky. All my clients are in Mason, Blue Ash, and this area up here. Why? Because that's my target market. Doesn't mean that I won't accept somebody from the other areas, because I've got two clients from Western Hills. But it hasn't my target. They where I'm taking and focusing all my energy. And that's the value of that. Because what you do you know, you overlap your networking groups. And by overlapping your, you then create the energy. Because guess what? I want people to remember who I am. And the only way to remember who I am is that my name comes up. The only way that's going to happen is I've got to see the people. VCP, remember that? Visibility. And that's huge. That's why the target market is so, so important. Big corporations do this all day long. If you go to a Procter & Gamble, you call somebody a buddy, we're in a meeting. Guess what they're talking about? They're target market. That's what they're doing. Curry Synergy. Big corporations do this. They decide who are they going to sell. And then number two is they decide what products are going to sell. And then they hire the salesman to do it. Problem is, when we go on our own, when we become salesmen for a corporation or a company, we're getting paid to do it. But we're on straight commission. Guess what? We need to do the first two, too. What product am I going to specialize in? And what is my target market? Big corporations do this all day long, and that's why guys in small businesses fail so often. They don't do the first two. They don't decide who they're going to sell, and they don't decide what they're going to sell. 